In the cosmic tapestry of our universe, black holes are the enigmatic ink blots. Dark scribes of fate, etching their presence into the very fabric of space and time. They are the celestial storytellers, narrating tales of gravity's relentless embrace, where even light succumbs to the profound pull of their mysterious hearts. Swirling like cosmic whirlpools, they are voracious moss, swallowing matter and energy, leaving behind only the haunting echo of their existence. Despite a primary diet of gas and dust, black holes will consume anything that comes too close, meaning moons, planets and even stars are on the cosmic menu. But does this mean black holes greedily suck in everything around them, like cosmic vacuum cleaners, as commonly imagined? The answer is no. To feed and grow, black holes actually need a little luck, and a big, bright disk of matter around them. Often we think of black holes as sucking matter in, like a vacuum cleaner, but that isn't a great way to think about black holes. John Reagan, a Royal Society University Research Fellow at Maynooth University, in terms of the size of the galaxy around it, the black hole is tiny, Reagan said. So, in fact, especially for small black holes, you're nearly better off thinking of them like feathers in the wind. This analogy points to the fact that black holes can drift through galaxies, with a very lucky few eventually finding themselves in dense environments rich with gas and dust where they can start gathering mass. It's very unlikely for a small black hole to end up in such an environment, Reagan added, with most black holes winding up in regions of space with little or no gas to feed on. So rather than inexorably pulling mass toward them from great distances, black holes depend on being in a region with plenty of food to begin with. Even then, however, lucky black holes rely on an external delivery mechanism to bring them matter. When surrounded by gas and dust, black holes don't just immediately start drawing everything toward them and consuming it. Instead, this matter forms a flattened, fast-moving structure called an accretion disk around the black hole. Black holes grow when rapidly spinning disk material gradually moves from the disk's outer edge to the inner edge closest to the black hole. From there, it is gradually fed to the black hole's event horizon, the point beyond which nothing, not even light, can escape the hole's gargantuan gravitational influence. Matter within the accretion disk is violently heated by immense tidal forces, causing many accretion disks to glow brightly. This makes detecting accretion disks one of the easiest ways for astronomers to locate black holes. We now believe that supermassive black holes, millions, even billions of times the mass of our sun, exist in the centers of most galaxies. Black holes can also swallow stars. But only the most massive objects can swallow a star hole, according to Hubble site. More often, when a black hole feeds on a star, it stretches and squashes it with tidal forces first, in a process called spaghettification or a tidal disruption event. Even though they don't suck anything up, black holes can act like cosmic vampires in another way. If a black hole is in a binary system with a star, its gravity can pull stellar material from the star's outer layers, keeping its stellar victim alive while gradually feeding on it. This process hastens the demise of the victim star, which itself could leave behind a second black hole in the system when it eventually dies. This is the Brain Maze, signing off.